Hi guys, and welcome to part 59 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now, before I start this video, I would like to warn you guys that this will be a long video. The mod I'm covering is Skyrim, which is short for Skyrim Redone, and it is um, an overhaul mod for Skyrim, and so it is a massive mod. Um, and by massive, I mean it is it just covers so many things that even if I spoke for four to five hours, I probably could not cover every detail. A large part of this video is going to be covering installation, including the installation of three other mods that I feel are essential to get the full Skyrim experience. And you should also be aware that there are some requirements for using this mod, and I will list them now so you can decide if you want to stay for the entire video. The first thing you're going to need for this, for all of the mods that I'm going to show you to install, is SKSE. Um, it's, I'm not totally sure if it is essential for Skyrim to have SKSE, but one of the essential mods for me when using Skyrim is the Uncapper. And the Uncapper mod requires SKSE. You are also going to need the Java runtime environment installed. Don't worry that if you've not got that installed, it's perfectly safe and it's perfectly mainstream. Now, in fact, I am going to bet that 99.9% .9 of the people watching this video have already got it installed, even if they don't know. It's one of those things that you sort of need for many websites and many other things. But you are going to need that. And so now that we've got all that out of the way, if you're still here, I'm going to assume you don't mind a long video and you don't mind installing SKSE and the Java runtime environment. So let's talk about Skyri. This mod is actually very, very modular. You can choose which aspects you want. So for example, there's a combat module. Stamina becomes a lot more important. Um, you use stamina for all melee attacks, for all missile attacks, and even all your blocks. If you get hit without blocking um, a weapon, you really do get in some trouble. I mean, it could stagger you, and it does a lot more damage. And the damage weapons do has been massively buffed. Yours and your enemies. You can kill your enemies faster, but they can do the same to you. It's kind of like using Fallout Wanderers Edition in Fallout 3. Weapons are just so much more deadly. You need to use your brain, you need to block, you need to use cover, you need to dodge, you need to play smart. If you get surrounded by enemies and they're hitting you in the sides and in the back, you are going to die. One big power strike from a double-handed sword will probably kill you. So the combat is a lot more entertaining and a lot more challenging but it doesn't become a grind you don't find yourself constantly uh, reloading a lot once you get used to the new combat you adapt to it pretty fast but you're always on your toes you're always having to think and try hard really really having a lot of fun with combat actually the main module of Skyrim though is the module that overhauls the perk trees and this is just too vast to explain. It really does radically overhaul all of the perk trees. The, most of the trees have got a lot more perks, and those trees are, well, in my opinion, a lot more balanced, they're a lot more interesting, and give you a lot more variety. For example, in the light weaponry tree, which replaces the one-handed weapon tree, you can find a lot more perks and a lot of perks specializing at different types of weapons. So for example, specializing at scimitars, katanas, and so on. So um, there's really no way you would get one character to have all of the perks for all of the weapons. This of course gives you a lot of replay value. The marksmanship tree, that is the archery tree, that has been enhanced in a way that gives you two different types of bows, the long bow and the short bow. The long bows are very powerful. They'll send arrows over long distances and punch through armor. Makes them great for sort of your long distance sniper type shots. The short bows on the other hand, they're very good at close combat. They do a lot more damage very close 
flanking attacks, etc. And the perks tend to revolve around more mobility, so you can move a little bit faster. So you do, you know, you can flank them, put arrows into their backs, do damage up close. It makes it a viable alternative to sword and shield. The armor trees tend to give you perks that actually increase your damage against people wearing that type of armor as well. So it's not just one-dimensional changes. It gives you a sort of broad range of new abilities inside each tree. There is a new tree called Wayfarer, and this is very interesting indeed. This tree is your... Well, it, it helps you survive Skyrim. It allows you to run a little bit faster. Um, it gives you the option to take skills, law skills. And if you take law in certain creatures and then take the tracker perks, you can actually detect those creatures in a certain range. If you take the chosen fiend perk, you can do more damage to these enemies. And you can take a variety of law perks giving you Bonuses versus almost every type of creature, including humanoids and dragons. Skyry also integrates very well with Frostfall, uh, the mod that adds negative effects for cold and wet. And if you have uh, perks in the Wayfarer tree, you will be better at resisting the cold and the harsh land of Skyrim. This tree also gives you some perks that allow you to set traps, bear traps. And... Uh, you can actually mix this in with alchemy. The alchemy perks also include things that give you explosives. So you can make explosive arrows and explosive traps. Brilliant ideas. But if you really want to see the full list of trees, including the ones I've not even tried myself, go along to the page and check under the main module section. There is a thorough list of all the changes, not just the changes, but why, the problem that the mod author saw and how he chose to solve it. It's very, very well documented and um, it's well worth reading if you're going to try this. Remember, this is an overhaul mod. It changes everything. There is a races module. Now, I have not tried this one myself uh, because I rather like the race abilities uh, as they are. That's just me. It's my personal choice. But a lot of people don't. And this module definitely makes them a little bit more interesting. There is a standing stones module that's fairly simple. It just changes the balance between all the stones. There is an enemy scaling module. Now, the intention of this module was to help the end game so that with your high level character, you were meeting things that were a bit more challenging. Um, the high level creatures had better perks and so on. But it does actually change a lot of other things. It changes many of the creatures in ways that make them a little tougher, but also sometimes a little weaker, like to, they have enhanced penalties as well as enhanced abilities. This will change the way you fight them, make them a little bit more interesting. You're going to find a few things like trolls a little bit tougher to, to fight because they regenerate more, but they're a little weaker to fire. There is an enemy AI module. Now, I'm not completely sure how this works, but apparently it makes them attack more often, block more often, and so on. But in game, I'm usually concentrating so much on not getting hit and killed instantly that I, I, I'm rarely sat around watching the enemies and how they behave. I can tell you that I do have to play a lot smarter when I play with Skyrim installed. The Encounter Zones module is an interesting one. This is one of the ones that people either love or hate. Now, I love it. Um, and what it does is it changes the way the vanilla game levels areas. The vanilla game sets the level of an area when you arrive. And usually, it's somewhere around your level. It might be a little tougher than you, it might be a little weaker than you, but it's usually not too far off. And of course, that makes the gameplay smooth. You can go from one area to the next, and it's always a little bit of a challenge, but it's always doable. This is, however, very unrealistic. With this module installed, you will get a more static change to areas. So an area you go to, it will have a minimum level. And this, of course, means you may not meet that level. If you get there and you're level 15 and everything you're fighting is level 25, you are going to get crushed and you are going to have to retreat or die. So you, you, you'll find yourself leaving an area and thinking, all right, I'm going to come back later and I'm going to get you guys. And that's what this module does. 
I really do recommend using this module. It will change the way Skyrim feels. It will make certain areas feel more dangerous and you will get more of a feeling of accomplishment when you go back and dominate those areas, <laughs> especially the ones that gave you a really, really hard time when you first got there. As I keep saying, I could spend hours talking about all the changes this mod gives, but for the rest of this video, I want to focus on the installation process because it is a little bit more involved than for a lot of mods. Now, I did mention that it was going to involve four mods, and we're going to be starting with the Skyrim community on Kappa. The author of Skyrim Redone does suggest you use this mod because his his overhaul mod is designed around the idea that you will be playing quite far on, that you will be reaching very high levels, 60, 70, and so on. And what the Skyrim community on Kappa does is it allows your skills to go beyond 100. This, in turn, allows you to get more levels. Now, you can actually decide how far beyond 100 your skills go, and you can actually decide if the skills make any difference. So you could actually set it so that you could go to 300 in your skill with armor, but anything after 100 makes no difference to the skill, just gives you the advancements in levels and therefore perks. This mod also allows you to change the number of perks you get per level. And this is fairly important with Skyrim Redone, because as you've seen, Skyrim Redone doesn't just overhaul the perks, it adds a lot more of them. So to really experience the game the way it's supposed to be experienced, you do actually need more perks. So the Skyrim community on Kappa is absolutely perfect for that. Now, there are a lot of instructions on how to set up the Uncapper, but we're not going to need to because the Skyrim Redone mod does come with an optional addition, which is its own setup for this mod, and I am going to suggest you use that. So, to install the Skyrim community Uncapper is a fairly simple process. Uh, pretty much as you would normally do, go along to the file section, download with manager. Once downloaded, Simply activate. So we are now ready to download and activate Skyrim Redone itself. Go along to the main page and the files section, and you're going to need the main file. So download with manager on that. It's reasonably large. It does come with uh, a few weapon mods and armor mods, so it will take a little time to download depending on your link. There is also an update at the moment. Um, if there is still an update when you watch this video, you will probably need that. You will still need it. You will still need the main file as well. So download with manager on that. And finally, for me, there is the Skyrim Elise Uncapper Custom Ini. So this is the ini file that is for the mod I've just shown you. We're going to download that. You're going to download that manually. Once those files have downloaded, the first thing I'm going to actually do, and I recommend you do this, is select the Skyrim Redone file, not the update, and click the I icon. And to the name at the end, I am going to add the word main and click OK. This is so that I can identify which the main file is. Um, and that will be important because I'm going to create a new mod package for Nexus Mod Manager with the Uncappa file. In fact, I'm going to do that now. So let me just minimize this. Uh, if you're wondering why it is my desktop allows me to hide and show icons like this, it is a program called Fences. Um, you can find that. Google it. Um, the, here is the file I downloaded. This is the custom Uncapper ini file, and I'm going to extract that right here using WinRAR. For those of you who haven't got WinRAR or 7-Zip installed, you're going to need that for this process. Now, once you've got WinRAR installed, you, be, you can right-click and just extract to, and I always leave the default name. I can then delete this RAR file. In fact, I would recommend doing so. I then go into the folder. Now, the reason you can't install this from Nexus Mod Manager directly is because the the folder structure is not correct. You're going to need a folder, first of all, called data. Then drag that file in there. You're then going to need 
a folder called SKSE. Drag the file directly in there and then enter SKSE. And finally, another folder called Plugins, spelt exactly that way, P-L-U-G-I-N-S. Now I'm using capital P, but Windows is case insensitive, so it doesn't actually matter. Drag the file in there. So you should finally have Skyri Elise Uncapa Custom Ini with a bunch of numbers, followed by data, SKSE, plugins, and the file is there. You can then close this, right click once more, add to Skyri and so on, use the default name, and it will recreate a new archive. I can now delete my folder. And when I open this with WinRAR, I now have the correct folder structure. Hide all those, go to Nexus Mod Manager, hit the Add Mod from File, and select the RAR file we just created. Now you can see why I renamed the main file with main, because this unfortunately has the same name. So now I can distinguish between the two. And in fact, I'm actually going to change this one by clicking the eye icon, going along to the end here and just typing uncapper ini. So I now have three files ready to install. First one, main activate. Now this will take a little time, it's a fairly large mod, and it will present you with a list of options. Now you're going to need the main one, and then you have to choose which modules you want. Now I don't use the races or the standing stones, check the main page to see what they do, but I do use combat, enemy AI, enemy scaling, encounter zones, and this one, this one is for if you are using Frostfall. If you're not, I really do highly recommend that mod. Great mod for making Skyrim feel very realistic. But if you're not using that, do not select this. If you are using it, do select it. They really do integrate very, very well indeed. And then hit finish. Um, yes to all when prompted. Then do the update file. If there was an update when you checked, then do the update file. It, it will ask you this annoying question, telling you it's been it detected a different version. Click no. And if it prompts you to overwrite any files, click yes. There you go. Yes to all. Okay. And finally, the uncapper any file. Activate this. And it should ask you to over... Again, no to this silly question. And yes to overwriting this. And it should be asking you to overwrite this if you've installed the other mod correctly. If you don't get this, you did something wrong. So you now have Sky reinstalled along with the uncapper and the suggested ini file for that. And before I continue showing you how to install this mod, I just want to show you one of the problems you're going to have if you just install Sky Re by itself. Skyrie alters all the damage done by weapons, the armor value of armors, etc. But of course, the mod itself only does that to the vanilla armors. So if I check my armor, my inventory, and I look at leather armor, you'll see the, the value for this le leather armor is 78, which is a lot higher than it would be um, in the vanilla game. Elven light armor, 96. And they've not been crafted. Now look at the Light Sons of Skyrim armor. Now this is a very good set of armor. This is from the Immersive Armor set. And it is re realistically considered one of the better light armors. It's certainly far superior to leather armor. And yet it is only armor value 51. So leather armor 78. This armor, 51. So you begin to see the problem. And the same is true for weapons. Weapons altered by Skyree tend to do more damage. If you use um, a mod that adds weapons, those values will be far below what Skyree would have had them. And thus those weapons will be next to useless to you. And if any of your enemies have those weapons, they will not do very much damage to you. So it's not balanced 
for any modded items. So that's what we're actually going to fix next. Now to make Skyree compatible with all these mods that add weapons and armor and so on, we're going to use something called the Reprocker, but we're also going to be using Balbor and Steel Soul's Skyree Reprocker project, which is a mod that essentially tries to provide the correct values that the Reprocker itself will need for these modded armors. Um, don't worry about it. It's not really that essential for you to know what's going on unless you really want to tweak the values yourself. I'm suggesting for now, you just go along to the file section and hit download with manager on Balbor and Steel Souls Reprocker patch, the latest version. Go along to the Reprocker page itself and go along to the file section there and once again, download with manager for that mod. Once they're downloaded, go along to the mod section and first of all, find the Reprocker. Activate and hit OK. In the original video, I accidentally skipped a step here um, and my apologies for that. And it's an important step because we have to create a block list. And don't worry if you don't know what that means, I will show you later on. Go along to your data folder, Skyproc Patches, T3ND0 Reprocker folder. And in here you will find a file called reprocker.jar. This is a jar file that you will run using Java runtime environment. As I mentioned earlier, you do need that installed. Double click it and you will get a nice user-friendly little menu. Ignore it for now and just hit patch. It will work for a few seconds and it will rebuild some files and some folders right here. Now, oddly enough for me, when I do this one time, if I go to files, I still do not have a block list. So I go back up and I'm going to rerun it once more and hit patch. This time when I go to files, I have a block list text file. This is what you're going to need for the next step. Now go up to Balbor and Steel Souls Skyry Reprocker project and activate that. You will get this nice little menu. This is where you're gonna pick all the options you need. So, first of all, select the Skyree Crafting Fix. I don't see any reason not to. Same with the Reprocker Non-Player Fix. Now, if you have the Dragonborn DLC, also select these two. However, pay special attention to these, the file called Reprocker Dragonborn Fix and Reprocker non-player fix. We are going to have to add certain values to the block list for the Reprocker. We are gonna sort out the block list now before we even install it, because you can do that. It doesn't change anything, um, whichever order you do it in. So we'll do it now whilst we've got this nice little warning here. You're going to need to go along to your Skyrim data folder, Skyproc patches, the Reprocker folder, and files. Open blocklist.txt either with notepad or notepad++ and you're going to have to add this file name reprocker nonplayer fix.esp copy and paste it here. Make sure it doesn't have the quote marks. I'm going to press return. I'm also going to need this file Reprocker Dragonborn ESP. Again, copy. This, we're doing this so that we don't have to keep deactivating them from the uh, Reprocker process, from um, Nexus Mod Manager each time we run the Reprocker. So, I've put those two files in the block list. Save and close. That's all you have to do, and you won't have to do that again. That's the last time you have to do it. For patches, I'm using Immersive Armor. I'm not using any of the others. So that's what I need. I hit Finish. It's going to ask me if I want to overwrite some files. Yes to all. And that is the, the main files installed, but I'm afraid the job is not quite done yet. Now, before I run the Reprocker, I am going to run Boss and let it sort my load order take a second or so. But once it's done it, I am going to double check it in the Nexus Mod Manager. 
The load order does need some manual intervention. Uh, the reprocker should come more or less at the bottom, followed by the reprocker Dragonborn ESP and the reprocker non-player fix. Uh, these should be the last three files. Do make sure that is the case. So now we're ready to run the reprocker. Now, you're going to have to go, first of all, to the data folder of Skydim, but I must also warn you that you do need the Java runtime uh, environment installed. Almost all of you will already have that installed if you wanted to run Java in browsers, etc. So it's probably not a problem. If, if you have not got it installed, I will leave a link down below to the page. You can go download it and install it. It's relatively easy and it's perfectly safe. So go along to your data folder, go to Skyproc Patches, the Reprocker folder, and just double click on the jar file, reprocker.jar. It will then run this little Java program. I am going to leave all the settings as they are default. However, you can change these settings if you want. I'm recommending you don't bother. I would leave them all the same, then hit the patch program. And then you will get this little box open up and it will do its thing for a few seconds. Once it's finished, it will just simply disappear. Now I'm going to go back and open Nexus Mod Manager once more. And what you should do is go along and check the Reprocker ESP, the one I moved all the way down to the bottom. And you should notice now when you select it, there's a lot of other mods listed here. It's included Dawnguard, Hearthfire, Dragonborn, and all these unofficial patches, Frostfall, Cloaks, the armor compilation, and so on. It has added all of these items, and it has made them compatible with Sky Re. Now, the beauty of this is you can install other mods, and hopefully this process will make those mods compatible with Skyre without needing any patches or any work from the mod authors. So this is a brilliant idea. It does mean that every time you add a new mod or uninstall a mod, if you uninstall any of the mods on this list, you will re have to rerun the reprocker. Try saying that fast a few times. Um, you will have to go through the process once more. Just double click on the jar file. It will open up the window and you just patch once more and it will overwrite this file with a new one. You are going to need to do that each time you uninstall one of these mods or add a new mod. And I would recommend that you keep the Balbor and Steel Souls Skyri Reprocker project up to date as well as the reprocker. So when you install a new mod or uninstall a mod, it's probably a good idea to check those two to see if they have been updated and update if they have. I really do highly recommend that. And once I get back in game, I can check out the Light Son of Skyrim armor and I can see it is now armor rating 122. So as I said, this is fairly good armor, very good light armor actually. And as you can see, it has been, I don't know what you would call it, sky reified. One thing before I wrap this video up, if you are upgrading to version 0.9923 from an earlier version, you may have found that you were suddenly hit by a bug that made you run a little faster than expected. Don't worry, pretty easy to fix. Now you can fix this using the console. Um, so you've basically got to stop and start a quest. So simply bring up the console and type stop quest XXXCM init. If you now move forward, you should be running a little bit more normal pace. However, don't, don't leave it at that. What you now need to do is start quest xxxcm in it uh, i believe this is the combat quest and uh, it, there was a small flaw in it when upgrading so that should fix that as you can see i'm now running at a far more normal rate which gives me a reason to sprint okay guys that's about it for this video if you still want to see more mods i did a couple of mod preview videos this week 
One of them was for quite a popular mod that gave you a slave pack porter, and the other was for a lesser known mod, but definitely one worth checking out, a mod that lets you teach dragon shouts to your follower. Go check those out. We're going to end, as always, with some screenshots that you guys have posted. Um, if you want to post screenshots, I will leave a link down below. You're more than welcome to post them. I try to get as many as I can on each video. They're really great, way better than I could do, so I do appreciate you guys posting those. I hope you found the video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, remember, please click the like button. I always appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you guys for whichever video you decide to join me for. And until then, as always, have fun. Thank <laughs> you.